Hey, what is up guys? Today we are going to fix the mess we made in the last episode. So this is part two of our shooting or our, our arrow tower shooting tutorial. So as you can see, it works fine now. We have a lock on our enemy and also we have some nice arrows rotating themselves towards the enemy. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Alright, so here is our mess that we made last episode and this one we're going to clean it up and um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to change our position update function. We actually, we were using move towards and we're going to change that because it's not going to be optimal in the end. It's not going to be what we want to use um, and there's several reasons for that. I went over it uh, in my head, I guess, <laughs> but um, in the end we're not going to be using the uh, move forward function actually we're going to use some kind of loop instead which is going to be way more optimal because we can get rid of the colliders okay and less talking more coding let's go inside the arrow projectile script actually let's go back inside of base projectile we're gonna fix some stuff in there first so the first thing we need to change is we need a reference to our turret so the, the, the person that shoots this projectile we need a reference to that Let's go ahead and say public transform tower. So we're going to create that uh, property. Make sure it's a set get capital letter as always. And then after that, we are going to take this property over here, the lock on target. We're going to remove it, put it up here. And instead of calling it lock on, we're simply going to call this target. And it's going to be, um, we're going to be using this transform now. We're not going to be using target location directly. And uh, well, you keep both. Actually, we're gonna be we're gonna be using both, but let's just leave it like that for now, and go down here. We are going to declare ourselves a private field that we'll call transition. Make sure you initialize it at 0, .0. .0. And um, yeah, okay. Now in the constructor, what we're gonna do? We're gonna remove this lock on. We're not gonna be using it anymore. Then we go back inside the update. In the update, a few things are going to change here. Well, first, are we locked on the target and lock on? We're going to change that for are we locked on the target and is the target, uh, th does it exist, basically. So this is pretty much the same thing we had before, but now we call it target instead. So target location is equal to target dot position. Okay. Now, over here is the big reason we're doing that code again. Um, this is a move towards. This is how can I say this? So, um, move towards does not know if it's ever going to reach its position. Say we had a arrow that was flying at 0 0.5 meter per second, uh, and that arrow was shot towards our player with a lock on a boolean flag on. So it would follow my player around. It moved with a 0 0.5 meter per second speed, and my player moved at say 7. So if he, keep, if he keeps walking to, uh, forwards forever, the arrow is never going to reach him. And that's a behavior we do not want in our game. So that's why I'm going to remove this whole line and we're going to do something else instead. What we're going to do is we're going to use a loop. And what we'll do is we'll say transform the position is equal to vector 3 dot lerp. And then we take the tower dot position that we we are going to receive in parameter as well. We'll fix that in a moment. So tower the position, the, the position of uh, whoever is casting or creating this projectile, and then target location, and we'll give it the transition uh, float at the end. So transition is a value in between zero and one, which determine where exactly are you in between these two positions. So say the transition was 0 0.5, then you would be right in between this first and vector and last vector here. Okay, now we need to calculate that and we'll do that up here actually. So right beneath the um, the is launch uh, check, we're gonna do transition, actually, whoops, transition is plus equal. And now that we still have speed, yeah, we still have speed. We're going to change this value name here in a second uh, actually, let's do it right now. So instead of projectile speed, we'll say time to target. So that's the time it's going to take uh, in seconds for your projectile to reach its target. So transition plus equal time to target. 
oh my bad, it's not time to, it's transition plus equal time dot delta time divided by time to target, which is going to give you, um, well, like we said before, transition has to be value in between 0 and 1, and this is just going to scale down the ratio, so say it's, ta it's taking 5 seconds to uh, reach a target, then you are going to write 5 in here, by the way, change this for time to target, and then it's going to say, well, uh, time to delta time divided by 5, which is going to give you one-fifth of a second after a second. Okay, now we got this out of the way, make sure you change your um, time to target field over here. It was projectile speed before that, now we use time to target. And our update should be pretty much done, actually. Let's make sure, oh no, <laughs> we gotta we gotta do a um, a check, see if we're done with the transition. So, to do that, we'll simply say if transition is bigger or equal to 1, then we have indeed reached our target. So reach target is a function we don't have yet, so let's create it actually. Let's make it um, a public virtual. Actually, let's not make it public. Let's make it a protected virtual void reach target. Okay, and this is the action. Uh, we, we pretty much just do our logic here. Our uh, we've just hit the target logic. Okay, so uh, let's write it right away. Actually, let's go ahead and say if we have a target. If so, if we still have a target, if the target still exists, then let's do target dot send it a message. We're gonna send it the on damage message. Good. Now, of course, we're gonna send it the damage structure, which we took in parameter down here. Here it is, damage, we put it inside our property, and then it's up here. Okay, then after that, once you're done um, doing damage to target, let's go ahead and destroy our game object, so destroy the arrow. Oh, type over here, we should write it with a small letter instead. And this should do the trick, okay. Now we're going to get some errors in there, I assume, because we do not have... Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> We don't get errors, but we're going to get one at runtime because we don't have a, uh, where is it, tower. We need to make sure that we pass in parameter um, who exactly is this projectile coming from. So in the launch over here, we're going to add a transform. So transform, and it's going to be tower. Now also, the target location, we are not going to be taking the target location in parameter anymore. And the reason why is we still don't have a reference to the target. We use it over here, but we're never assigning it anywhere. So instead of taking a vector 3 parameter over here, we're going to say transform target. So we are simply going to take a target in parameter instead. And then when it says uh, target at location, we're going to say target dot position instead. And of course we need to assign those, so let's go ahead and say tower is equal to tower target is equal to target. Okay, so we have some errors here. It says there is no overload method that takes two argument. Uh, we are on arrow tower. We are creating our arrow and then we're sending, we're not sending, we're calling the launch um, function but we don't have the same parameter as the launch function over here. This one takes in three parameter, the tower, the target and the damage. This one sends only the target and the damage. Actually, it sends the target position. Let's remove that. Let's just leave target and add um, transform. So we are on the tower right now, so we're sending this tower's transform, and then we send the transform target, which we get in parameter here. This is coming from the get nearest enemy, and then we send the damage structure we create here. Okay. Now let's go see what we get in game actually. So um, I just want to be up to date with what's going on in the game. So just just to catch up. So I'm pressing play on this, and these are very, very, very slow arrows. And it's not using the same method as we just described. Actually, it might, but we're not locking on the target. Let's go ahead and lock on our target.
and we, we are going to do this in arrow projectile so this is going to be specific to arrow projectile they're going to be locked on our target so let's say public override uh, launch and we're going to call base.launch so it, this is pretty much base.launch is pretty much going to call the launch function inside of our base projectile so this is going to be run if we leave base.launch here we override this function so we we overwrite this this is not supposed to be called but then we say well go ahead and call my base so go back in the code and find uh, find this function inside base projectile and then run it using these parameter which are basically the same one uh, you get over here okay so we're running the uh, the normal launch for every single projectile then we're gonna do we're gonna modify time to target it is going to be 0 0.5 so we're making this tower faster or this projectile faster than the others and then we're gonna say is locked on target is equal to true okay good so let's go ahead and play this now press K and there we go it makes way more sense and as you can see the arrows are locked on our target now we get this weird knockback and why exactly are we getting it it is because we still have a collider on our arrow and there is a few things to um, fix about this arrow as well let's just pull it here so you can see okay so there is a few things wrong about this the first one is that we still have a collider so the capsule collider you can see over here let's go ahead and take it off so right click on it and remove component nice now we shouldn't be getting the knockback effect on our uh, enemies anymore but we still have one more issue actually let's say we want to modify the rotation of our arrow so it, it is looking um, towards its destination so it's pretty much acting like a real arrow then we would need the tip of the arrow to be pointing towards the uh, the forward of the arrow and the forward in unity is always the Z axis so you see the blue uh, the blue axis over here the tip of this arrow should be looking at this very tip here so um, since we don't have any artists available right now and we don't really want to implement some big not big but we don't want to implement art in our game so model 3d model just yet we are going to do a quick fix on this and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that we are going to delete the arrow projectile of uh, well the component we're gonna delete that we're gonna move our cylinder at the origin of the world which is here actually let's move it just a little bit so we can see then we are going to create another object create empty we are going to call this uh, arrow again and add the arrow projectile on top of it so now this empty game object over here so it has no mesh nothing this object is now our arrow we are going to drag and drop the other arrows the one we had previously the model inside of the new one put its position at 0, 0, 0, which should reset it um, right exactly on top of its parent, which is our real arrow. Now what we are going to do is we are going to rotate this guy inside of its parent, so let's rotate it this way, like this. Now if we click on the parent and we press uh, say W to see the gizmo, as you can see it is now looking well the tip of the arrow is looking towards the Z axis which is exactly what we want so basically we created a container for our model but we're still using uh, the arrow projectile actually we're using the arrow projectile on the container and then below that is a rotated game object so we're pretty much just using this as our base and this is only the model by itself okay now we can go ahead and overwrite our previous a prefab so click an old drag and drop this inside the arrow prefab hit replace and we should now have a proper working model that we can use to um, well modify the rotation and have its good forward okay uh, since we did that let's just go ahead and rotate our arrow in the game as well we are going to go here this is the arrow projectile 
And what, how exactly are we going to do this? We are going to override the update function. So back inside our base projectile, over here we do the private void update. Instead of private void, we'll say protected virtual void update. And then we go back inside our arrow projectile. We do the same exact thing we did here. So public or actually protected virtual void update. And we're going to call base.update. So the code hasn't changed at all. We just overridden our update function inside base projectile, but the code is still going to do the, these, um, these calls because we called it here. We said, okay, go back and then run your initial update. But then after that, we can tell it something else. So we're going to say transform look at target uh, location. I just say that. Now let's hit play. And it should it should work already. So let's hit K on this. Oh, uh, that was too fast. There you go. So now the arrow is pointing directly towards the enemy. Isn't that great, actually? So as you can see, if you take the container of that arrow, you can see that the Z, the Z axis, so the blue one, is is the forward, and the forward is pointing directly toward the enemy it's shooting at. Well, actually, it's pointing toward the target location. And since uh, our arrow is locked on our enemy, then it's always going to follow it around. OK. Let's take a look at this. Enjoy it. And we just fixed the big mess that we made last episode. So I'm really happy about that. And uh, yeah, good, guys. So if you learned something, please leave a like. If you enjoy it, please leave a like. Also, if you have any question or comment, please leave it in the comment section below. Subscribe for more tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.